Welcome back to another video on the channel. So we have reached the semi-final stages of the Women's 2021 US Open. I joked the other day that we could see an all-teenage final of the Women's US Open between Leila Fernandez and Emerald Ucanu. And now it's become a real possibility with both reaching the semi-final stages in what's been a fantastic Grand Slam so far. If we were to get an all-teenage final, it would just top off, you know, a brilliant, brilliant tournament. Two fairy tale runs. Particularly, I think, Leila Fernandez to come through Kerber, Osaka, Svitolina, all in final set decided has been incredible. But first off, I'm going to focus on the Emirado Kanu against Maria Sakari semi-final. You know, at the start of last month, Emirado Kanu was still unheard of by pretty much everybody. Ranked around 350 in the world. To make that memorable run in her Wimbledon debut and reach the fourth round was, was brilliant to watch. And it was always a case of... British tennis fans knew the potential that Emma had, but could she continue it um, at such a young age in US Open? And she's certainly done that, uh, gone way beyond, I think, everybody's expectations. Um, done brilliantly well just to qualify without dropping a set. Then reached the fifth round with the loss of just 15 games, which, you know, one of the lowest amount of games lost um, to ever reach a Grand Slam quarterfinal, I think, rightly. Uh, Belinda Bencic, Tokyo Olympic gold medalist in the form of a life, dispatched her in you know pretty comfortable fashion. You have to say in the end, and now inside the top top fifty in the world, British number one. Uh, how far can this story go? Is the question remain to be seen. But when an eighteen year old gets this far in a tournament, I think you always just talk about them riding the wave, riding momentum. You know, a lot of a lot of players haven't played these players before, which is makes it more difficult for them. And you sort of forget about how good a tennis she's actually playing. You know, the way Maricano served in return this week has been exceptional. The forehand, the backhands down the line, the aggression, but mixed that with the dogged defence, the athleticism, the speed, uh, the fitness. And what I've been most impressed about with Maricano, because I've always known for a good couple of years by watching her and reading the pundits and the coaches of what I've said about uh, Raducanu, I always knew she had the potential on the court. Um, is the way she's handled the whole situations. You know, she hasn't been at her best in either of the last two matches at the very start. You know, when two love down against Shelby Rogers, uh, two love down against Belinda Bencic. You know, nerves which you'd expect at 18 years old playing on Arthur Ashe Shadim for the first time in her life. But the way she's recovered um, to get back into the opening sets and battle out and and win those, but also the way she served when under pressure, you know, she was love 30 down in her last two service games yesterday against Bencic, and you thought, you know, is this the point where she does start to lose away, and we do see the nerves creep in, and she hits a few unforced errors, but she just seems to fight back, you know, she finds her first serves, she takes a point by point, she constructs points so well, she stays aggressive, stays in the moment, and to do that at 18 years old against, you know, Olympic gold medalist in a Grand Slam quarterfinal, is um quite special and just a remarkable story that continues to go on and it's a case of how far it can go but I think you know Radio Kano is going to be very very difficult to stop she just seems in fantastic rhythm she's riding the wave she's under no pressure now you know nobody I think in the world predicted her to get to the semi-final of the US Open on debut um so you know if she was to exit against Sakari then she can only be proud of her performances and, and builds from there but she is only 18 years old. She is on a US Open Grand Slam debut. But I think if you get to the final four, you've got to, you know, want to win the tournament. You know, you've beaten five players to get there. You've got two hurdles to cross. You know, you've got to, to back yourself and you've got to go and win that tournament, I guess, if you get that far. Moving on to Marie Sakari. And I've always been a fan of Sakari um, for a good couple of years now. I've always felt she's been on the verge of a real breakthrough to Grand Slam. But... With this such strength and depth in WTA, it's very, very difficult. You know, you can be up against top players in the second and third round. And, um, you know, Sakari's real took advantage of a, of a nice draw. You know, she played a fantastic match against Andrescu, um, came through a thorough on that one and, and performed very well last night against Carolina Pliskova. But I think we've seen a real mental shift from Sakari. As I said, I think she's always had the game, but... It's always been in patches and she has been able to replicate performances. I don't think she's had um, the best mentality in the big moments. I'm not sure she's quite ever believed in herself to win a Grand Slam and win major titles. But I think we've seen a real mental shift and she's really backed herself this tournament. Um, she's in fantastic rhythm and she's 
I think she's turning up to win this tournament now. I think she's she believes in her game on court. Um, I think you can see it on court and you know in her mind. I think when she got that French Open semi final, it wasn't quite her time. And as I said, I'm not sure she quite believed that she belonged there. Uh, she didn't quite execute her game style on the match. Um, I think she tried to switch her game up too much and sort of play it to the opponent rather than try and win the match outright by playing her best tennis. And last night against Pliskova, I thought it was a real statement performance. You know, she won 22 straight points on serve. She served fantastically well. She stayed aggressive throughout. And, you know, the way she's backing her first serve up and even second serve with heavy ground strokes, attacking the net with real conviction, authority, confidence, um, finishing points early. Um, even on the Piscuit return games, you know, she got to, she got to lots of balls back in court. Any short ball she was looking to take advantage of. I think she's got a lot of variety in the game now. You know, the backhand slice, I think, has come on a lot, um, allowing her to get up the court. And net play is fantastic, um, very aggressive throughout. And just got a real steely attitude, you know, really connecting with the crowd. Seems to be in a very good place, confident in what she's doing. and this match in terms of a win is going to be very, very hard because I think it's a perfect clash of styles. You know, I think to beat Radu Khan, you need to have variety, you need to take pace off the ball, um, you know, you need to use the net to your advantage, serve very well. And I think, you know, for Radu Kanu, a matchup against Akari is a good one for her. You know, she likes to play against pace, she likes to counter punch, she's great with angles. Um, but Sakari again, if she can land the first serves, attack the net, I think she has to finish the point very, very early because if she doesn't quite hit those um, you know, aggressive ground strokes in the right spot and paint the lines, it gives Raducanu a chance to use her speed, use the angles, counter punch, use passing shots, which she's done so very well this tournament. So I think although the, the match is almost on Sakari's racket, she does have to execute very well, and you can argue, will she be able to replicate that certain performance which she's done so well in this tournament in such a big match? You know, will she hit a few more double faults, miss a few more first serves, and how will that react? Because we know how good a returner Raducanu is. If the rallies are extended, then you do have to favour Raducanu, I think. You know, the consistent depth that she gets is very, very impressive. Um, she knows when to release that the point-winning shot. Yesterday, she had a few extended rallies against Benchich before unleashing fantastic backhands down the line or forehands cross court for clean winners. I think Sakari has to keep the point short. You know, she has to go for a heavy ground stroke, attack the net, um and, you know, attack the net with real conviction as she has done throughout. But I don't really doubt Sakari's mentality. I think if she was struggling mentally, um, to close that matches I mean would have seen that already against Andrescu and that set and set tie break or the deciding set against Andrescu even yesterday against Piscova, they're both close sets. So I think, you know, Sakari's mentality is bang there. A game is bang there. But, you know, Raducanu is riding the wave. She's under no pressure. She's playing fantastically well. She's won 16 consecutive sets at the US Open if you're adding qualifying. And when you get to this age of the of a semi-final of a Grand Slam, you know that both players are in fantastic shape. Um, brilliant form, full of confidence. So it's it's very difficult to split them. It's going to come down to fine margins and who dominates the big points. <laughs> and I am going to go with my head on this one over my heart. I would love nothing more than to see Raducanu win it. Um, to get through the final would be an amazing story. But I think the power and the serve of Sakari might just be a little bit too much for Emma, and I'm going to predict Sakari to come through this one in three sets. You know, if the rallies do get extended, then I think Raducanu um, will definitely win those exchanges over the whole, over the course of the match overall. Uh, but I just think Sakari's serving so well, playing hardcore tennis, how it should be played, aggressively on the front foot, inside the baseline. Um, and it's going to be very difficult to defend against those ground strokes. But she's going to have to replicate those performances and whether she can do that in a Grand Slam semi-final will remain to be seen. But I haven't seen any chinks in her armory, um, on court or, phys or mentally, that I can see where we're kind of really exploiting. So I'm going to go with Sakari in three sets, but I'm sorry, Maria, I do want Emma Raducanu to win being a Brit. Now moving on to Leila Fernandez against Arena Sabalenka. And this Fernandez story is, again, similar to Emma's, quite incredible. 
we've known a little bit more about Fernandez over the last couple of years. I'd say than Raducanu. You know, she's played in a few more Grand Slams and but never quite had a run like this. You know, to come through a final set decider and back from a set and a breakdown to Naomi Osaka was a special win. But you know, was it um, just that special win? Would she go out in the next round against Angelique Kerber when she was a set and a breakdown? Looked like she would. Former US Open champion. But she battled back before winning another decide and set in a tie break. And then went on to beat um, Elena Svitolina, which is again a fantastic win. A player that was fifth in the world. Another decide and set. So her ability to, to cope with the mental pressure and produce the best tennis in the biggest moments. Similarly to Raducanu has been so, so impressive. And I think with... With Fernanda, she's got the crowd on the side. You know, she's very emotional on court. She celebrates the big points, and she just seems like a player that can almost flick a switch. You know, she can be a set in the breakdown, but it might take one clean winner on a break point to really get the crowd behind her, and it just seems to light the fire. And she just goes on runs of games, playing extraordinarily good tennis. Um, and a, a player that can do that and go on runs of games and have the crowd behind her and just go on a hot streak is, is going to be very, very difficult to beat because you've never quite got a, you know, she could be a set in the breakdown and as I said, it only takes one match winning point for her to get back um, in a stride and reel off a, a number of games to, to completely switch momentum and the tennis that she's produced has been, uh, you know, electrifyingly good. She's, she's serving well. I think she's been very very aggressive on the returns which Sabalenka is going to be have to be careful of and it, it could force the errors from Sabalenka you know she's served a lot of double faults in this tournament she's going to know that you know Fernandez is a very very strong returner so Sabalenka is going to have to nail a lot of first serves in this one which could as I say force it over hit and force lots of errors from this second serve in particular but you know Fernandez's energy around the court her ability to counter punch and hit pass and shot and hit extraordinarily good winners um, and net play is very very solid for a player of her age she's got immense speed fitness and you know she's going to be difficult to stop mentally she's she's banged there already at just um, 19 years old and anyone who's beaten Angelique Kerber and Naomi Saka from a set and a breakdown is not going to go down without a fight so Irina Sabalenka I think for the last couple of years it's been a case of when's Sabalenka going to win a Grand Slam not if you know, particularly on the hard court, she's very, very dangerous. You know, my opinion at the moment over the past, you know, 12, 18 months, she's a, one of the most consistent and hardest hitting players in the world. You know, her first serve when she nails it, 120 mile an hour plus, there's very, very few players in the world that are going to be able to return that. A forehand can top 90 mile an hour. A backhand has come on leaps and bounds, particularly on the defensive side. I think she's, you know, neutralising rallies a lot better. I think Sabalenka in the early years was guilty of overhitting the ball and trying to hit winners to rallies and rallies. I think the key for Sabalenka is that she's now able to extend rallies, um, have the consistent depth and then open up in the right shot. And, you know, when Sabalenka delivers with devastating ground strokes, I don't think there's anybody can really compete. And she has been able to counter punch and defend fantastically well, Fernandez, but I don't think. Kerber and Asaka in the format she was in and Svitolina developed quite the pace that Sabalenka does. Um, you know, it's not to say how well you know Fernandez has played in this tournament and she's she has redirected pace very well. She's counter punch, she's played an incredible passing shot, she's been allowed to dictate um, at times and I'm just not quite sure she's gonna be able to overpower um Sabalenka and the only real thing I think could let Sabalenka down here in this match is herself. You know, she hasn't really produced the best in quarterfinals and semi finals over the years. She is getting there. You know, she was very, very strong at Wimbledon. Um, but I still think there's slight mental chinks in her armour at the, the big moments of matches. Um, if she has overcome them and she, she can produce the best in those moments, and I do think this whole tournament is on her racket. Um, she's the best hardcore player in the world, I'd say, at the moment. And. As I say, it's that, it's that serve and forehand. You know, if she can get the first serve in play, back it up with the forehand down the line or a backhand cross court, then there's very few players, if any, can, can cope with the power, um, the strength and the conviction of Arena Sabalenka. So, in terms of predicting a winner, you know, I would love the for, fairy, tale, fairy tale story of Fernandez to continue. I really would. You know, the way she's interacted with the crowd this week and 
being supported by her family and the players that she's beaten, the runs that she's had in matches and, you know, the the comebacks that she's made have been quite incredible to watch and there's no doubt that her and Raducanu are going to have fantastic futures in the game. Um, but I'm going to go with the experience of Sabalenka and the power. I just think, you know, she's looked imperious, she's looked unstoppable so far this week and there's nothing, we haven't seen anything to suggest that, um, you know, she's not going to produce um, somewhere near her best and if she does that then, I think she's just going to out-hit and overpower um, Fernandez at times and that'll be enough to see her win. So I'm going to go with Sabalenka and straight sets to meet Maria Sakari in the final. I'd like to see Raducanu and Fernandez do it. Um, so if, if they do, then my predictions have gone west, but I'm not too fussed on that front. Um, so if you do have any predictions of your own for the women's semi-finals, do leave them in the comment section below. I do always enjoy reading those. I will also be bringing out a full men's preview prediction video very, very soon to do check it out as well. Please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next video.